I'm here with Gerald Rizzio, and he is with a foundation called the Afraterra Foundation, and uh, they're doing uh, historic mapping of maps that were available for Africa and trying to get them into a digital environment. And with, with that, I'm going to turn the mic over uh, to Gerald, let him tell you about it. Yes, uh, I represent the Afraterra Library. It's a research library in Boston. And I'd like to give um, our first mission uh, the reason why we exist. Um, the Afraterra Library embraces a nonprofit mission to gather and preserve the cartographic record of Africa, uh, enabling uh, a broader interpretation of the land and the relationships in time and space. Um, the needs of education are rooted in the principles of focus and the principle of visualization. Our commitment stands on content and access. This is achieved by cataloging, digitizing, and displaying more than 5,000 of the original rare maps of Africa. The content spans over 500 years and covers all regions and all scales in eight different languages. This platform delivers a thorough archive from multiple primary sources previously scattered and sequestered throughout the world. Here we can foster a multidisciplinary examination in a wide public exposure. The, the methods that we use is mostly a database that can be easily searched and friendly database. The second method is digitization of the maps in high resolution, which can be panned and zoomed to see all the features in the very old engravings. Uh, the third way that we use the maps is also as a companion to create lesson plans or to a companion for maps to visualize any text in any book um, using place names. Uh, and then the fourth is, is to have individuals report their own experiences in a blog that can be linked to the map itself. Most of these fragile maps have never been viewed in our lifetime. Uh, from this position, the Afraterra Library gives substance to space, delivering an extraordinary connection to the origins of history. At this vital time of education, we welcome all sponsors, grants, partners, and volunteers with interests in common to join us as stewards extending this important horizon. We have two examples here of original Dutch maps uh, from the 1500s and one from the 1600s uh, showing West Africa and the Gambia River. And then our, uh, our conclusion is the large wall map of, from uh, a British cartographer in 1820 uh, who was sponsored by the African Association, which was the beginning organization of the Royal Geographic Society. Um, the map is mostly noted by the blank spaces, which are admitted to be unknown until the rest of the world could realize the land of Africa. Uh, not discover Africa, but to realize it for the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you.